Welcome back, everybody, to the desk. Mass one, midnight. Melvin Izzle, Nar, and Joshi as well. <laughs> We're the LGL here. Of course, we've got to have a Nar. Gentlemen, welcome back to the desk. Game three is upon us. Match point for Dead Nation Focus Me. And this one, as we've mentioned many times, could go in either direction. Gentlemen, where can Rascal Jester? find the momentum as we've already mentioned in the pre in the post game of the previous one uh we're gonna flip it up and reverse it from melvin is or joshi coming over to you how can rascal jester do that or is there just no way of destroying a dfm that's unstoppable i feel like you have to put hachamacha on something that he is more comfortable playing right you know he's played the jarvins we see him play the sejuanis i want to see him play zinjao or maybe blind zinjao right it's a situation mm. where you just got to give him this fighting champion that we know he's been performing well on throughout the regular season and if he can find that comfort and get a little bit of that mental state back and actually go for some mm. of these fights and steal i think he's got a much better chance in impacting the game in a pause way for rascal jester for sure Melvin Izzel, Midnight, thoughts on how Rascal Jess can also do that? We've already mentioned the jungle, so I'm going to try and for pull you guys <laughs> away from the jungle. Maybe go to top side, maybe bot side. They got Thresh Aphelios in the first rotation, and then they didn't really do much with it. Got to be about mid lane for me. Get recap uh... off of this Orianna, mix it up, because it allows Hachimech to play the game. In the first one, we looked at it and said, recap didn't get to play because they had a Jarvan. In this one, it was more of, the Nocturne plus Oriana is meant to be a combo, just like the Javan Oriana. That's not happening. Give them both independent mm -hmm. champions so they can have their own impact instead of relying on each other. Because right now, whatever it may be, it's just not happening. I mean that you've been calling for some other champions you'd want to see as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few champions in the jungle that... Oh, champions in general. Now, I'm going to do a hot take. Because I just tried I to pull just... us away from the jungle. Man's going back to it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm going to do a whole thing, and this is irrelevant to the jungles. This is about the bands. At this point, Rascal Jester, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Shane, oh, no, don't run away. You're staying here for this game, damn it. So I think you just need to complete, stop. Okay, fine, go top lane. Bugger. Okay, so yeah. what you need to do is completely change the bands entirely. You've been banning out the Aurelia. Mm. Ban out the rise. Yes, you know he's stronger than the Aurelia, but if you can't answer the rise, you're dealing with a problem you know you can't handle. You might as well deal with a problem that you can maybe handle. Because if you just keep running, you're hitting to the same wall. Do it once, fine, you didn't realize it was a wall. You're trying to get to platform nine and three quarters. Do it twice, I'm looking at you in judgment, and the third, I'm calling the ambulance because you obviously need help. Gentlemen, is Midnight on the right idea, or do you disagree with him or agree? Yeah, okay, Melvin Izzle, yeah, you're clapping <laughs> yep. your hands. Yep. I completely agree with all of that. It makes complete sense. It's what we saw from Axis yesterday. They were trying to run against that brick wall and it didn't yeah. work. And then the Irelia came out and you know what? That was their most competitive game. Let's be real. It was the best chance they had. <laughs> yes, it got completely stomped by the Irelia later, but at least they were in the running. It was in their favor. I think that's the right way to go for it. I also want to take a look at the bottom lane, right? Because we mm. looked at the Thresh of failures coming through, and we previously saw the Rel coming out from Seeker. I want to see something with a little bit more easy, long-range engage, your Rakans, your Leonas, your Nautilus, right? Mm. All of these things that are going to allow Seeker to be much more impactful and actually getting fights started instead of giving it over to someone else. Before we even started the Analyst Desk, I was praising this guy and his ability to find a uh, fight where his opponents are caught out. He doesn't have the tools to do that right now, and I feel like it's really uh, making Rascal Jester look a little bit timid. Uh-oh, uh, I'm gone. Absolutely. Oh, I'm back. I mean, the, uh, I mean, Hachimecha heard you talking, so he, he pressed R and was like, no, no, no. No, <laughs> no, can't no, no, be no, doing no, that no. anymore. <laughs> uh, one thing I would also like to uh, pick your brains over is there's a few other champions that we have been seeing rise up in the popularity of 11.16, and it's something that we do need to briefly mention before we throw it over to our lovely casters. Um, J4, obviously, we've already seen. We saw Hoglet pull out a rumble in a previous in their previous series. Two mixed results, um, but competitive, at least. Um We've seen the Rakan, obviously, obviously, as well, and something you've just mentioned, Joshi. Kennen has been another pick. Are there any other champions out there, gentlemen, that you'd like to see them if we're doing this Hail Mary idea? I'm going to go. I recall seeing a lot in the Academy. The Lissandra just seemed to come out of nowhere, for me at least. And I think. We did, yeah. 
why not run Alessandra here? Like, again, if specifically, I'm looking at recap, you need something to survive the lane that isn't Galio, that can nullify a lane. I don't necessarily see Lissandra as a horrible option. Let him pick Aurelia. Pick Lissandra. She's like, not a brilliant matchup, I don't think, but whenever he tries to dive into you, just slap the W key and problem solved. Okay. Yeah. I'm very entertained that you brought that up because you and I seem to have very different impressions on how strong of a champion Lissandra is right now. <laughs> I feel like something, <laughs> something you could only play into like exactly LeBlanc and everything else you're going to get run we leave run the LeBlanc with. open as well, right? We just, we're, oh, we're Dre, just it Aria. Let Aria play LeBlanc. It's easy. But it is something like you have to do something, right? What you've been doing so far isn't working. The Oriani had success in the regular season, but this isn't the regular season. You have to play to beat your opponent right now. And maybe it is Lissandra. Maybe it's something else because it definitely hasn't been the Oriana so far. Marvin? I think that it's been a lot of counter punch tools for Rascal Jester. I just want something aggressive. Give me a Malphite for all I care at this oh, point. AP hey, Malphite. AP Malphite, top lane Kinatu. Probably not on the cards, but he has played a lot of Kennen when he was back in a cat uh, well, back in scouting grounds. But gentlemen, we have got we we have probably said anything and everything that could come in this series. If <laughs> There is no adaptation. We told them so. If there is, well, it wasn't the one that we said, so it's not our fault. Anyway, Nymera and Initialize, I hope you're ready to take it away because it might be match point and get the last game of these finals. Or oh, it could be the beginning of a crazy one. Gentlemen, take it away. Welcome, Welcome. back, everybody. It's episode three. I mean, game three. And I am joined by a dark lord of the draft, Darth Alpatine. Hello, sir. Greetings, my young apprentice. You want to forget about Jin Zhao. You want to pick Jarvan and Nocturne and completely interway two drafts from the jungle pool. I agreed to this skit. Yes. I helped set it up. You did. That was your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Always two there are. Never more, never less. It is, in fact, still initialized a nightmare. Who is in fact really the Dark Lord of the Sith? All oh, along. You, you can't just out me like that. You, Mate, you, you just, took the cape off. You, you just, gave it away. You just, you just doxed a Sith Lord on broadcast. That does not end well for <laughs> Look, you, friend. I, I hate to do this, but like, I'm just saying, much like Darth Palpatine, um, or Darth Sidious. Okay, yeah. I can, but I conflate the names. He literally just wore a hood, and people couldn't work out who he was. So. It's I the Clark Kent effect. Just put on some glasses. Okay, but anyway, you could take yours off. I wouldn't know who you are. I'm a different Who the hell player. are you? Who knows? I'm not initialized, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway. Just like when you take Jin Zhao away from Rascal Jester, they don't look like the same team. When you take Rise away from DFM, maybe Jeez. you Jeez. will see a difference in identity. There are a lot of things that can change in this draft. I think, like I said, right from the off, what the hell happens when Recap's not on Syndra, as we've seen, becomes a bit of a non-impact. I don't know now, though, because again, after at, um, episode two, uh, the attack of the cloned drafts, where they tried to do the same thing. Um... Rascal Jester did not actually adapt fantastically well in terms of denying DFM their composition. They still got the rise. They still got themselves everything that they wanted to play with. They changed their own side of the equation, but it didn't lead to a positive result for them. Well, the cloned band wars certainly aren't over yet. It's exactly the same again. And the Phantom Menace, the Dad Nation Focus Me, Aria has been such a problem to deal with in I draft. Know, I don't think he's been so phantasmal. I think he's been he was pretty visible. The Phantom Menace, mate, he had a fairly extravagant. Well, he was only on the screen for like 20 minutes. I you could argue that. Very impactful. Anyway, let us instead drag it back to the guy, to the, to the draft, not the gag. We're trying to move away from the gag. Uh, that probably says a lot about my mindset right now. But time to make it a little bit more serious at this point. Varus is I the first that. pick from Rascal yep. Jester. That yep, is yep, the yep. adaptation. But Detonation Focus Me go, great, Varus. Well, we'll just pick the Rise again. Your move. They've got a final pick to pick up here. Potentially the Renekton. I feel like Varus at least has some options. No, there. I love the just going for the Jin Zhao early and saying, okay, we just want to take that yeah, one now. Sol has looked incredible when he has engage agency. Callista Fates call. Varus with that ultimate going forward too. It also, of course, did so well against Utapol in the mm -hmm. 1v1 mm -hmm. matchups. Utapol was picking Jin, losing in that lane, even though Jin is not a champion which you pick to, you know, lose lane. You need to get ahead in the early stages to then use your utility okay. because you're so poor from behind. Rascal Jesters, though, credit to them, are completely changing up the script and gone for three completely new champions for them in this series. So if you remember back to that Juggernaut match, DFM were early picking the Trundle all the time. 
partly because I think Hachimecha is such a prolific Trundle player. He gets a pick early on. It is not Green Lissandra or Green Jarvan or Spooky Jarvan or whatever the, the mix are. It's certainly not Lissandra either because that is the Zoe locked in as well. The response from DFM is to go, okay, poke for poke. We're picking the Ezreal. Utapon's already crushed on it. Let's do it again. Yep. Second phase of bat. So... In this game, of course, we have the Trundle. Potentially something like a Leona would be huge for Rascal Jester too, and I think that DFM should consider banning that away because you have the Zoe Varus poke combo with a pillar to make sure you can pin people in place. DFM actually look like they're setting up for something like a Renekton or a Narpik and banning mm -hmm. away counters from that too, saying, all right, okay, you have the combo, so what? If we crush through topside, what the hell are you going to do? Rascal Jester's now should sniff this, this out from the Gwen ban and say, yeah, well, we're just banning Renekton and Nar instead banning away the support answers like to that, the, the front-loaded damage. Alistair is the best face-checking support in the game for actually going aggressive from that point. You walk into Fog of War, tank the first thing, pop your ult, engage onto this static backline. But as I said, DFM, if they give through something like um, something like a Leona, I feel like they're going to get absolutely shredded by the initial combo. Exactly. There's the Renekton ban. They take oh, that one off the so. table as well and say, okay, Kinatsu, what have you got left? Because they could just first round the nut here to DFM and say, okay, what do you have? Do you want that Viego again? Potentially, of course, it wasn't the Viego into the Nile last time. It's Viego into the into the Renekton. Absolutely. Uh, I feel like you get bullied out a lot more by that mm -hmm. ranged match. And one of the things right. which is nerfed about Viego is that uh, his consistent sus lane sustain. Right. If he's hitting minions with his Q, his pass, and everything else, he's getting much less healing than he was in okay. previous patches. And Rascal Jasters instead have said, "All right, go. okay, good job trying to engage into us. We're banning away the, the premier engage supports, which Gang plays. Of course, Leona is still on the table, like we were saying." I think that Rascal Jester should snap that up right now, but of course there is stuff like Thresh available too if they were to go for it. I'm not the massive fan of it uh, with the Varus. Instead, they could go for the older All right. Nar counter, and this All is, right. the, this is right. the matchup, which Kanati made his name in the LGL on. Okay, so you see the combo. Camille isolates somebody with the Hextech Ultimatum. In comes the Solar Flare. Varus and Zoe throw out the orbital lasers and blow up whoever is unfortunate enough to be caught in there. There is there is no cleansing the, uh, uh, a Hextech Ultimatum, and you might actually be able to hold Utapon accountable uh, with that. And now, gang, no, the rel, okay, thinking so about the rel. The here. thing about the rel is, yes, Leona can't stop your combo. You are paper, though, to the burst combo of Rascal Jester. Mm -hmm. You mess up your engage. You die horribly. You are so easy to pick off. And the last time, the last series, of course, we keep harking back to that Dragon match, that gang started playing these tricksy, hard engage champions, which can get punished. It was on the Rakan, mm -hmm. actually. Rascal Jester's continually sniffed him out, hit him with arrows time after time. It was Sol's Varus back then, too, and stopped him having any team fight impact. DFM will have to show that they've learned from that loss, and Rascal Jester's will uh, try and strike and snipe his. Uh, dig the, the fangs in once more to deny DFM this uh, engage combo. So it's another look from Rascal Jesters. This time it's a poke comp with a split push in the Camille. This time I actually think Camille can be somewhat uncontested. Rise can probably do an, do an okay, okay job, job in the in right the circumstances. Absolutely. That is potentially a skill matchup, but for once, I'm not saying DFM can play the 1-3-1 one, one and say, you likely get the advantage guaranteed here in pretty much every matchup there. I like the attempt to the change up from Rascal Jester. They ain't clone draft this time. No, so I feel like this is probably Rascal Jester's best chance to win, I think, actually, in terms of the drafts that they've had so far. Like I said, they have ways to pin people in place, hit them with the double poke of Recap and Souls Champions. Need to not fall apart early, though. They've managed to do that well so far. Um, but DFM has still continually found themselves with some advantages. 2,000 gold leads at the 11 to 15 mark, stuff like that. If they have a, a larger lead come out because Kanati messed up 1v1s versus Evi, Arya starts uh, breaking apart the mid lane, that is dangerous news for Rascal Jester. It is. It absolutely is. And they've got to be aware. Basically, if Hachimecha and Secret can stand strong and allow Varus and Zoe to poke, or if they can find the engage and blow up a key target, I am looking at Arya. I am looking at Utapon. They have some options. But we saw... A pretty similar comp from none other than DFM in their game two uh, mm -hmm. against Rascal Jester's back in the Juggernaut match. They snowballed a bit late, did DFM. And then uh, Secret on the rel, backed up by Callista, don't get me wrong, managed to pick off the Immobile Varus a few times and turned the game around. DFM, they've got the 
conditional front lines of the Nar, and of course the Jin's out. Rel will get tankier throughout the game because uh, she's uh, on level paper. I not know. sure about that against the I know, Nourish, Shumbri, I know. and uh, Sol. Yeah, but I say you can also just shred the resistances because Trundle, but there is some options here, and um, I feel for once, again, Rascal Jesters have at least managed to find a bit of an adaptation that offers a different angle again. And for me, the big change here is Hatchamecha being on a more meta jungler. It's on a jungler which can play as not primary engaged, so Hatch is not going to be dragging his face through the mud to try and get into DFM's backline. And you can play a bit more utility, play a bit more for facilitating your teammates in a way that you can't necessarily on the picks that they did beforehand. I think that that change in mindset might do well for Hatchamecha as he can maybe look for a clean slate in game three. As DFM, look to match your prediction, and uh, sadly not mine. I did think it was going to be a 3-1, so we'll see if that uh, does come to pass and uh, match myself with Reed's prediction on that one. I mean, DFM have themselves, again, an incredibly strong top side, which has uh, all the individual parts to out-teamfight, out-brawl, out-skirmish, but if this does get to the 5-on-5, five five, Rascal Jester looks scary. Game on. This is series point for Detonation Focus Me. The momentum is heavily with them. The desk went all over that. But I will throw this out there for those Rascal Jesters aficionados. Midnight, listen in. How many times have we seen reverse sweeps in the history of League of Legends, particularly in situations like this? Game threes are dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. Because if things do start to go wrong, the questions start asking. And that momentum, if you break it, is incredibly hard to bring back. And especially now with a different look again, the adaptation from DFM, if they don't get it right mm. in game four, then gets scarier well, again. So this is a potential here. And, and particularly for DFM, which is a team that has struggled to change their worldview of League of Legends, actually, when, when asked for it on short notice. They have sometimes come in with a certain idea of what they want to play, and if that is proven Trundle. wrong, uh, <laughs> then they can struggle to make the necessary changes. They can sometimes outplay at that point. I still think it would be very dangerous going to a game four and game mm -hmm. five situation for Astral Jester, make no mistake, but... If this is the answer from Rascal Jester, where they can pick a different mid laner, find a way to stop DFM from playing the playing around just Ezreal nuking people around dragon fights uh, from from range, Rascal Jesters might have themselves um, a second wind coming into this mm -hmm. series. Now, of course, you've got to call that out. The AI bot finally favoring Rascal Jesters for once here. It's mm -hmm. normally uh, been pretty much even or DFM favoured, uh, and this is the first time we've seen a bit of a change around, and I kind of agree. Trundle's got a good matchup into Jinzo on the 1v1. Jinzo dives in and goes, oh dear, all my stats have been stolen, as it's a decent double knock or double attempt there from Secret. Doesn't get that much for it, but have traded back. Utapon probably coming up the worst end of yeah, that well, trade. Sol gets all of his Hail of Blades autos off there, mm. and he gets a, a double E uh, damage coming from, from Secret, so the Zenith Blade applies on both of them. Mm -hmm. Decently stuff, decently played stuff. They're going to get the early level two and continue to put down the hurt. Again, Sol just using that hail of blades, getting that early attack speed in. Make sure the Utapon and gang are punished for a turret approaching the wave. And that basically means they have to see that level two pressure. The Ute was going to be that way. Trundle is pushing down towards the bot lane, whereas Steel is clearing up towards the top. He's just been put on vision. That's happened a couple times this game. And that basically means we need to watch out for what Steel tries to do with the Nar. He and Ebby have been known, just just occasionally, to look for top lane dives. It's a, it's a thing maybe, maybe a few <laughs> of you might have seen before. But, Not so much but, in this series. But one better. of the things about this game is that when you have the Zoe, um, one thing you can do, and it's something which Recap did to get that ward onto Raptors, which was swiftly cleared out by Steel, is that you can walk out of Fog and get very early prio by... Mm. Um, by just like using that long range battle star. However, in this case, actually, Arya bounces the way oh, back and gets so the, sad. Gets the, uh, the the slow push back towards recap, stacking up those ways. So then actually, Ryze gets the teleport back, or actually can just uh, cheat a recall. And either way, it secures priority for Scuttle and still on the top side of the map. Udupon had to drop three minions there because they were just low enough for the yeah. turret to execute them. There was no setup available. So I was watching it there, just like be very sad about that once. <laughs> See, Hatchmet has gone for the full clear, gone towards his Krogs, whereas Steel has not gone so far. Uh, Arya has chosen not to actually use that slow push to um, reset himself, where as a cheater, or using that teleport, might choose to do so now, though. And, uh, recap, not in a position to mess with the map right now. 
Of course, Arya Lightly gonna go look for things like a. Oh, oh, never mind, that's in the Zenith Blade coming. Utapon taken pretty low. That's a turnaround now from Gang. Gets a bigger nice. hell, And Secret's gonna have to flash away, but here comes Hatch and Metcha. First blood over to Sol, but here comes Arya. But it's four men deep as Rascal Jess has finally found a first blood. Arya needs to run away, but he's taken so low. The minion is blocked. There is no further teleports, and Rascal Jess has come out on top. The that two got close. v two from Rascal Jester is where they find their advantages, much like we expect to do coming into this series. Actually, of course, in the last time where DFM lost to them, a lot of that was off of, well, bluntly, bot difference. Not that Utapon and Gang played badly. Sol and Seeker were just a level above. Rascal Jess would find themselves an early lead for the first time in this series. Can you see how it starts off? Of course, you have the difference between heal and cleanse between the AD carries. Mm -hmm. Makes a big difference if it's your support that's the one that's taking the damage. You can't give that extra amount of HP. <sighs> and Gang, though, you do get that earlier amount of resistances and shields. Doesn't manage to flash out on the arrow. Sol just knocks them down. And that was so close to being phenomenal, but the teleport response and Hatchimetra being down there means there is no attempt to be able to go any further. And it is great play from Rascal Jester's heal difference. Heal difference and very close there for a Zenith Blade landing on Zarya. That could happen two kills. If you kill the Rise there, that is huge um, for the side of Rascal Jester's because it's just actually affecting two lanes at that point. RM maybe has to stick in lane a little bit more then. Misses a wave, down in XP and everything else. Does get out for their trouble and it's helped us burn, burned on both sides. But DFM, no longer with the early game emphasis, falling prey to Rascal Jester's aggressive laning plays. Okay, Secret is here alongside Recap, but Steel's also around. And Secret needs to be aware. He burned his flash. He can't get out of this. He's just dead. He's just dead. That's it. That's a freebie. Who are they giving it to? Giving it to Steel. As they uh, don't want that to they get dragon off the spell, probably. And they potentially can get dragon and DFM. Though in the regular season, they were, as we uh, we will parrot what we said earlier, were the last place team in average dragons per game, partly because the game went so short, actually, so many times, because the game time was so fast. But they didn't focus early dragons. They didn't want to go for them because they'd rather get gold, rather get herald. But they find themselves in Infernal Dragon, some extra scaling stats, and the next dragon on the rift actually didn't get to see that one. But they get themselves uh, an advantage in the neutral objectives early on. They absolutely do, and that is a nice turn. It's a nice punish for the fact that the secret had to burn literally everything to get out. Of course, the heal is still down on Sol, so maybe an angle is still to punish. Hatch and Metric going to be forced off that control ward. You don't get to hold that one. Actually, Arya still think you. Mm. He's actually heading forward, so he had steel behind him, and uh, Trundle in a 1v2 is pretty strong. But that's very briefly, less... has the water walking active. Still sat in that river rush, and mid jungle TV2. Mm. Um, pretty close, I suspect. Being played around for DFM just briefly. As Hatch Metric. Mm. Head back Steel. is going to be briefly seen here. That looks like... Oh, still actually... Oh, the Flash Wimper! Flash through into the wind becomes lightning, and Arya gets that one! The 2v2 in mid is just too good from detonation. Focus me this game. It is, and need I remind you, way back in spring, with this new era of Rascal Justice came in, they took a lot of pressure off of DFM through the mid-jungle TV2 recap, solo killing Arya because he was not well connected with his jungler. While this team's now gone to MSI, they've won themselves a title in spring too. This is a hard-earned, hard-learned mid-jungle synergy from the detonation focus me duo in the middle area of the map. And they find themselves an advantage through it, just as Rascal Jester's earlier had found themselves one of their first advantages in this series. And that puts the gold even. Level 6 has been hit by Sol, and of course they are getting the shove in. They've got the CS advantage. No real surprise with how that lane has gone thus far. And that is good news for Jester's fans. Good news for the Jester's. I still want to get that as a band <laughs> at some point. No good one steal news, it from Good news, everybody. Yeah, that, that will be like the opening sound clip. It's genius. I've got it together. Someone, you know, signed me as uh, Ebby just does NAR things, which is use NAR ult on cooldown. And that is the potential win condition for the Jester's, is what I'm getting at. They've mm -hmm. finally got an option where Sol is in the ascendancy in the spot lane. He's got a kill. He's got a CS advantage. He's getting plates. That is fantastic when you need to get some of this poke ahead. It is. Of course, you haven't shut out the Ezreal out of the game just nope. yet. However, um, Sol has shown that there. Varus is a genuinely a win condition. You get Varus ahead uh, for Sol, and he carries the game for you. The question is, can you do that versus Arya's Rise? Can you do that versus Ebi's Not right now, which is, of course, up in CS as well in the early stages, and we are yet to see them enter the fray. For me, remember, in that draft, I was, I was very keen on saying, yep, yeah, 5v5, Rascal Jester's have that domain, but if the lanes fall apart... Rascal Jesters maybe have to play against too much of an advantage. 
to really come again. out to that stage in the game where they can start winning so heavily. So you've got to remember as well, Herald's now alive and DFM are doing what DFM do, which is rotate everybody up here. Soul's coming along, but DFM are already in position. There's a ward in this pixel brush that's now going to be disabled with the control ward taken out. The bubble misses. Check out the ward at the top edge of your screen as well, DFM. Haven't swept that one. There's a potential angle. If there is a teleport to happen, it could come through there. Choke points, the name of the game. But remember, you're oh, in two. Good chunk. Good chunk. As Aria lands an overload afterwards. Well, force of, that's going to be a heal, I believe, out of recap. I suspect. I'm quite sure where that heal came from, actually. Probably um, from uh, those minions or the Spellbook either ah, way. EDFM have Meganar now. They've bought enough time. Where's the Varasol? It misses, misses on Aria. And that means that the Herald is secured. Decent arrow from Sol Chunks. Ezreal right back out as penance and retaliation for the earlier true shot barrage. But now they're going to rotate towards this bot lane. Okay. That's going to be the realm warp to assist, huh. assist Gang and Unibomb from getting back to this bot lane and prevent easy turret access. There was a plate that fell down here, but it doesn't actually go over to anybody because it nope, fell when no nobody was goal. around. If a nope, plate falls and nobody's there, does it actually get collected? I mean, I'm fairly sure there's still shards Ooh. of pottery on the ground, but yeah, Youthfun actually takes a huge chunk there. I'm not sure if he's safe to stay around on turret if the W is available. Still on the bot side of the map, so is Hatchimetcha, and there are no teleports to respond right now. Hatchimetcha does call off the dive, not uh, willing to stick around just yet. Just shy with that arrow. I wonder whether Sol was thinking about going for a flash, but I suspect Utapon had his trigger finger over the E very readily. Steel is here as well, so he's going to try and hold off. There's still a bit of a wave to clear, so time to see whether Rascal Jesses really want to play for more plates, but I think DFM have managed to defend this well enough. And so, much closer early game right now, but again, remember DFM didn't explode the early games in the first two games either. It took until about the 15-minute mark before we started seeing those... Gaps opening up a little larger. Now the question is, of course, where is this gold going to go from the Herald? Is it going to be onto... Are you going to try and put it into the Varus and try and say, all right, try and defend this? I don't think that's a very wise idea because I think Varus mm -hmm. is the one person that can turn around a fight at this point in the game. I think it's much wiser to go put it into the into the Zoe. I completely if agree. Zoe loses first turret in that mid lane, that is when you start losing the game. You start draining yourself out because you don't have the same walls to start firing the bubbles through. You don't have the same shooting gallery to get your poke down. Question is if they are going to get a free run at that tower because Rascal Jester's... Having that champion, should surely note that should be a prime objective for DFM as well. So, second dragon is spawned. DFM very much not in position. You can see Steel's very much over towards that top side of the map. And actually thinking about going for an invade because they just don't want to fight right now. And potentially, I can see why that might be an option. Kinatsu is going to back away. Potentially put a ward onto this Gromp. Doesn't. It's into the tri brush behind. And now, you can see Gang and Utapon. Now that Steel's on vision, going to retreat and top. they're going to take that full tower top. They should win with the Herald. They should do. They'll be able to take that first turret. Remember, when you kill a plate, the more people that are around the falling plate gives it more resistances. No, you True got... damage comes in from the Herald, though, and that is a hefty chunk okay. of gold. Over to DFM's top laner in that hmm. Nar. Camille might not be able to side lane with so much impunity now. There is a teleport from Arya to defend bot lane should a fight erupt. No, no paranoia. Eventually stop that this time. Recap, looking to maybe land a bubble. Does, Does land find it. it. Okay. Gonna look for a paddle store afterwards. And here comes the rest of the team. Aria's gonna have to flash, surely. Does get pillar flashes over the side and gets out with the phase rush. But the flash is down. Clean pillar. Just doesn't give a gap on that side of the wall. Forces the flash. Not too looking Ooh, for a one. The the, well, looking for a... Uh, well, buffered out of it, I believe. Actually just dunked to the side as Kanati walks off and sidesteps it. Arya's flash forced out. Tower still alive in the bot lane. However, there's still more minions being lost to the tower. Actually, keeping this tower alive to kill minions while there are still places available probably gives more of a gold advantage over to Rascal Jester than it would be in quickly felling the structure. You can look to the, towards that gold leader. It's still about 2,000 now for DFM, mm -hmm. kind of out of nowhere. Of course, that will even up, assuming this tower, turret falls, which it's likely to with the continued lane shove that has been granted to them. And got to call it out. Recap. When he came into the league, when we said, oh, he's a retired player. Is he even going to be any good? Um, things like his Zoe really started to say this guy has got what it takes to compete in the LJL and he's got it in this game really good angles there to get that bubble Can there I, were a uh... lot of that yeah you just pointed it out on screen yeah. so, tell us about so it so recap absolutely worth talking about recap is a factor in this game let's talk about Hachimetra though that CS difference in the jungle is it's becoming huge. huge and that means that of course there is a completed uh gore drinker to the uncompleted Sundra from Hachimetra right now there will be a Starrix coming in at some point from Steel. There is, however, a Serpent's Fang built up early from Sol. That will mitigate some of the advantage coming in from the Gore Drinker builder of Steel. It's very quick and easy lethality to build up. And remember, actually, one of the great things about building lethality champions is that 
while you can go for your mythic early, the mythic stat doesn't actually make a difference until your second item's built up. So mm. why don't you go for the very quick and easy power spike before you build up something like a Dust Blade, an Eclipse, or something like that, and the Serpent's Fang gives you the extra utility, to actually fight around uh, the mid game and two items spike a lot stronger, particularly against this, uh, this top jungle duo from DFM, which has found itself an advantage so far. It has, and Steel has basically done this as trade for Hachimecha, basically just camping bot mate. Yeah. He has stood in that lane and said, you cannot walk up to the tower. And Steel said when that dragon was kind of available as maybe he just goes over the wall and clears the wave. Well, he, he, try he, and get he sure, there, sure showed those minions. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, can I get Kanata in the bush? Doesn't, it's fine. It was a, it was a, a cheeky attempt. Of course, with Steel over the wall and Flash, that could have been an option potentially, actually. Well, I mean, the thing about Mega is that you can use your ult for a lot more utility ever since the change mm -hmm. a season and a half ago, where your ult became very low cooldown. It's pretty much up every oh, time you get up towards your thing. There is a Flash, there is a oh, heal, they're going for it! Oh, forced to Flash, Flash there, Steel flashed on top. Soul gets taken to about half HP. And the dragon's slow. alive. It is. Dragon's alive, very importantly. It's half HP on Sol. does have a pot running. And when you go for Hail of Blades, often you go for the Ravenous Hunter. You can heal up off of waves. Bubble start landing. So see if that turns into anything else. Does not land, though, because the crash down brings Gang out to a safer distance. Okay, got to watch for Ebby here. He's actually in a bit of a dip. Gets a huge chunk onto Sol in trade. Saves the hop to get over the pillar as well. So I think Rascal just, just have to retreat. Their poke has been poked out. Has and DFM. Uh, use the Realm Warp again to get from one side of the exit to the other. Stop themselves going through dangerous corridors. No Bermuda Triangles to be found in this LGL region. That's on the other side of the world! Or something like that. Different side of the map if you've got... Oh, the, there's GMT0 yes, in the middle. That one. There are different maps. Turns out you can view it from any point of the globe. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this this point isn't working. It's going to be Pangea all over again, and I'm not bringing that meme what back. What do you mean? That was perfectly relevant. <sighs> it, you made it relevant. Like, look. <laughs> it was, like, your ability to turn pretty much anything to sort of league related probably says a lot about what you think about on a day-to-day -day basis uh, um, it, it's actually quite scary my my, my intellects it truly it scares me how much uh, how low it is yes yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you see my solo key you would know exactly what you're talking about but um what i love what dfm have been doing around the objectives because they have continually found themselves first to it they've not been taking the coin flipping gauges in mid, trading that flash or flash onto Sol, particularly with half the health bar, with lesser amounts of sustain and less time to sustain off of waves at that point too from Sol. Very important. Ebby doing similar things and just making sure that Rascal Jester don't have a strong platform to take these fights away from them on. DFM are just avoiding the bad fights and that's great to see because sometimes before they have struggled to identify the losing points in the game for their own compositions and the winning points of the enemy ones. Zoe's just teleported in and that means that even with Mega Nar, I don't... Ebby is going to be walking up here. Instead, nope. DFM rotate away, and they've given Arya free time to shove in this wave on bots. Of course, mm -hmm. there was no damage done during the laning phase because of how far Sol and Secret be able to shove up, and so they are not. So Arya's only going to get a, a, a small chunk. But all the while, Steel has done this again. Every time there's a kind of confluence of Rascal Jester's players, Forty has to is largely left plural? up the other side of a confluence of Jesters. It is now. It's not like a, I don't know, like a, a raucous of Jesters. Um. I feel like it's probably a circus of Jesters. Circus, that would be pretty good. That's I what I'm going to call I was thinking that. of some flowery word. I don't know whether like it is, but I, I'm going to put a, a letter into the Oxford Dictionary to say uh, it'll be a circus of Jesters. Cool. Well, we'll put it into the like the global okay. league contract, not the contract database, but like the, 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 the terminology database. Okay. Um, specifically for the LGL Absolutely. Region. Yeah, yeah, specifically. Um, we do see a trade of towers across the board. And again, I don't mind that DFM chose not to fight that Harold topside. I think that would have been a losing fight. And it's a way into the game for the Jesters, you don't want to give them that easy fight. You don't want to give them this power around the early lethality spike of Varus. We've seen plenty of teams Ooh, not fight around it. Steel is caught out, Can but Everfrost stops uh, De Camille getting in. And now Steel is on top of Sol, who remembers got no flash, goes golden to seal briefly. Sol so low, does not go down, but now Sol's in trouble. Ezreal gets that when he had the heal, it's not enough, and now the wallop comes through in secret, is dead as well. It wasn't as clean as they were hoping. That Everfrost was goddamn clutch. It was clutch. We've seen a couple of missed Everfrost on so wall, wall jumping Camille's uh, shout out to the LCK files. Oh, an awkward moment there. One. But turns out we got ourselves an even better mid laner. Okay. Okay. Well, we oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> got ourselves out. Got a, I, have you heard about this guy called Arya? I hear he's pretty good. And uh, he oh, saves oh. Steel so well. Rune Prison comes oh. in. Can't use the extra mobility. Everfrost coming after. Kanatu just denied from this fight. Uh, Steel props the Crescent Guard, and you're looking at what Sol can do at that point. Does land an arrow from within that Crescent Guard, but it buys time. Again, it's the temporary front line. It gives them this ticking timer for the extra teleport to come in, and DFM don't allow Rascal Jesters to disengage from their fights, and then finally, they find themselves uh, 
a way for them to peel back and still buy so much time as he has done the entire series so far and get themselves to, again, a significant advantage just beyond that 15 minute park. Now, uh, Mark going towards 18 to 19 now. And the thing about an accelerated Jin Zhao in the early game is you can just be unkillable. Mercury Krebs alongside a Gore Drinker this early. Mm -hmm. He's level 11. Like, this guy is so hard to <laughs> kill quickly. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me if Steel had gone for the Legend Tenacity as well. Getting himself Quite some, probably, some actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Steel is going to be at the point where, I mean, you don't have knockups. You've got sleeps. You've got a lot of stuns. And Steel is going to be able to survive the initial engage in a lot more situations the Rascal Jesters are, are truly happy with. And if you're going on to Jin Zhao again, a flash Arya coming through on that rise, particularly since he's gotten so much side lane farm. I love this stat, actually. I don't know what it is for, for DFM in the playoffs, but I, I think I remember it from parts of uh, the regular splits. How much farm do you get post 15 minutes yes. after plates have fallen, after Herald has come into play? How much does your team prioritize you getting farm? We can see that actually Arya and Ebi have been going to side lanes and soaking up so much. DFM have actually been very good at going into a 1-3-1, not being punished when they're doing so as well. They keep this tenuous balance from shifting members across the board so they're ready to respond to these plays. And they just hoover up farm so much better than so many other teams in the region. Whereas you can see with Rascal Jesters, they've been banking on trying to get an engage with a four-man unit. It just hasn't been working for them this series. Got to call it out though. Jesters do have control over the Cloud Drake right now. It's about to spawn in five seconds and they have a Varus and a Zoe who are ready and willing to start throwing out a lot of poke. That is a potential option. If DFM come in to fight, there is a world here where they can start really making DFM suffer. Hatchimetra starts up. It is on vision. DFM, are you thinking of contesting? I'm not sure they are. No, I don't know because you look at what Rascal Jesters are doing. Uh, uh, you oh, know, take, they take themselves a single, okay. single Cloud Dragon, but the Dragon is available. So is Baron. It's just going to be vision control okay. for now. But DFM, I again, I, I, I have to say, I'm a big fan of what they're doing here. They're not going into the poke. They're not going into this this phalanx of uh, frontline into long range artillery which dfm would struggle to get across they're getting themselves gold oh, in secret. price for the dragon and oh. secret is oh my days he gets very away nearly with caught it. but no vision over the wall oh. no crash oh. down to come in and the rascal has to support very nearly picked off Here now the baron has started kanati is on in the bottom side potentially a, uh, a teleport to be blown here Okay, so remember, the Kinatsu are not here. Hatchimetra and Secret are around. But remember, it's Poke. You've got to be a little afraid. Of course, it's not red side for the Poke, so it's a little less safe for them as Udapon uh, gets the True Shot Barrage across the mid lane wave. He's alone here, though, so I think actually that Barrow Star might cost DFM this tower, actually. I don't think it's going to cost oh, them because, uh, of course, True Shot Barrage not just hitting... The Varus, it hits the wave two. Youthpon stays safe. He's out of range of the first arrow too, to make sure that they weren't poked mm. down at that point. Mid lane out of tower stands for both of these teams. We talked about how important that is for the Zoe. Also important for both of these longer range um, carries of Ezreal and Varus. Gives you that extra platform and degree of safety or vulnerability if it mm -hmm. were to be taken mm -hmm. to turn away from here. <laughs> the smite away from steel. Kanatsu. He's in the smite right now. Kanatsu. Oh, Kanatsu needs to be a bit afraid, Can actually. If he come, where does he go? He goes the right direction. If he'd gone back towards the mid lane, he could have been quite easily caught out by gang there, but I think that would have been yeah. communicated and it does survive. Do you want to briefly talk about it? Um, we've seen some interesting Varus builds across this series and Sol did go for the Serpent's Fang first here. We did talk about that earlier. Okay, yep. I missed you talk about that. No, 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 that's, that's my bad. I, I should have been about, more paying attention. Hey, wow, Steel's really far ahead in the jungle matchup. But Serpent's Fang is there, so when you get that Sterex in second, you've Bingo. already got an anti-shield item cool. built up there. So we already touched in on that. Fantastic, saying, thank Sol you. Good to know. Gets that very <laughs> early, gets that very early lethality. It's a very efficient item. The mythic item uh, only Awkward. gives you only gives you that extra stats from the second item onwards. Not really something you need to build on lethality champions early. Okay, so uh, I uh, clearly I <laughs> promise I practice active listening. Uh -huh. <laughs> that one apparently. Um, I, well, I didn't call you out for the lane ward in level one, which I said about, and then you literally repeated the point afterwards. So uh, okay, I'll do that enough. now. So right, okay. We've got one so for one. About... It's one for one, you know? Okay, so, uh, you know, I was owed one, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> Assault takes two shot barrage. Felt a bit sad about that one. I'm uh, going to be watching the paddle stars, though. Bubble misses and Udapon's fancy feet and allows him to stay in this mid lane. But recap and Sol being here means that Udapon, if he ever messes up, he does have the cleanse, of course, but it's still. Um, a little bit scary for this guy to stick around. He does have to back. Means that it's oh not rather it's gang that back to apologize. So Steel and Udipon trying to hold strong versus four members of Jack Rascal Jesters. DFM are thinking Oof, about rotating. Steel does get tagged by that paddle star. 
He's gonna have a trap repel attached to him, and that's just tower taken. Rascal Jester's brute force it. Okay, so the siege finally pays off from Rascal Jester. First turret down in their favor. Okay, that's a good point for them. Now they have the ability to start weaponizing mm. that poke elsewhere, going into the jungle, finding arrows over walls, finding, of course, bubbles in the chains of corruption over walls. DFM, onus is now on them to play respectfully around this kind of the, the jungle entrances oh, to that oh, area. Kanatsu. But Kanatsu on the side lane. Flashes, but gets room prisoned. He needs to avoid the Everfrost. He does not. He goes down. DFM find the teleport flank. And there's just not enough there. They might be thinking about it. They're not going to. But that's with the top laner down. They could maybe think about rotating over to Baron. 30 seconds death timer, actually. But they're not going to think about it. Instead, they're going to try and re uh, repay the favor in mid lane and take this one down as well. Remember, but there's still there's wave clear. There's a lot of wave clear. I'm not... I Thanks. mean, they could potentially the go for the flank. Here, they're going to go in on Sol, and they've got him. They've got to try and get him down. They get it, and now the turret is the next target. It goes down. Gang survives. Epi's so close to Mega. He's thinking about getting some more. Utapon starts free firing. Hatcher Magic gets pulled back by the Mega Nar, and the Wallop will help bring him down, and DFM's tower dives. This series has been clean. Is no more aggro. Uh, secret. So Secret goes back in and doesn't really find it. They're realm warping over to Baron, and DFM take the Express right back to Baron Bit. Oh, it's an absolute death blow from DFM. It starts with Kanai. Here we go. The rookie trying to find an angle on the side lane. Got Here the poke. The shooting gallery opened up. There's no jungler. They need to get the fight. They need to go in. It's not bad. But Utapon's at the back end of the fight. Ginati goes over the wall. Ebi is dead. But Sigi <laughs> is going to try and get a hold of this one too. Goes golden. It's a double for Utapon. Of course it's a double for Utapon. Make it the triple. Make it the Baron and Detonation. Focus me. Have all but locked in a third game win. DFM as Send in a minute of blinding, blistering pace from one pick into a killer dive. This is after you don't have the Camille Hatchimetra isn't in place and Gang finds the flank. We talked about how previously Gang had been spotted out. There's nothing to be seen here though. Goes in and completely off the vision. Hatchimetra chased down by Ebi. Of course it's Ebi on the Nar. One of his iconic picks, you keep talking about it. He finds himself oh, an opening after Gang, this player that returns into the lineup specifically for this split, finds the uh, potentially the series winning play. And just watch this at the back end of here. Kinatsu tries, they desperately try, but Utapon's over the wall. Kinatsu comes out and Utapon wins the duel with a little bit of assistance. A little bit of assistance. He's got the item points. He has himself the Muramana and it's all well and good having recap firing in there, but your already carries dead. <laughs> with a very close margin with the Baron potentially adding in that extra damage to take out off some kills. DFM, they just crushed the life out of this game. And look, Gang only has two assists, but those two assists were so clutch. And yeah. you call it out. I've heard of a Magnet Storm in a teacup. This one's looking to be a little bigger of a vessel. It'll be a Magnet Storm in a trophy at this point. <laughs> looking to really fill that one up with the tears of Rascal Jester's face paints right back on again. And it is showing some really sad tears at this point. They're at Cloud Soul Point. They have Baron. They have themselves an 8,000 gold lead. And Rascal Jesters, you've got three items on this Varus. Soul has to find something. He has to stay alive. He's a miracle. He has to find an absolute miracle. He has Flash and he has Heal. That certainly helps. Wave clearing against the Baron buff becomes a lot more difficult. You've lost yourself two mid lane turrets at this point. And again, once again, DFM find themselves in a position where they can 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah, Rascal just to find the oh, miss ultimate. There's the Crescent Guard. Soul stays alive though, so he can still- Oh, damn you! The wind becomes lightning and it strikes twice. It's not just a storm in a teacup because here come the thunderbolts as well. And this time they're going to start rooting in to try and close out the base. As Zoe is going to get knocked up as well. The round ball pin as well. Make it a party in the base. Kinatu needs to find something. But I think this will be it. Detonation focus me. They fell in the juggernaut match, but they came bat back angry. The Spear of Longinus didn't keep the gods down. They came back and they are here to smite all comers. Detonation Focus Me are going to worlds. Welcome back to the international stage. Detonation Focus Me revamped, empowered, bringing in the strongest roster this region has ever seen. DFM are your summer 2021 champions. It didn't matter what the comp was, if it was standard, if it was dive, if it was poke. All the answers came to naught. Aria has the right pose there. Come at us. And if you do, your best not miss. What a story it has been for this set of players.
for this organization finding themselves an unprecedented record-breaking title victory. This is beyond the level of dominance we've seen from almost any other region in any other time in history. And we talked about it at the start of this year. Arya moves to DFM, the best mid laner in the region, replacing the outgoing Emperor of Seros. But Gang has to split out for a split. Kazu does his duty, comes in as a support for the split. And we saw an MSI and DFM struck hard in a way that the LGL had never done on the international stage. Gang comes back in. It's a rough start. We don't have the undefeated split. There are a couple of bruises on the face of this detonation focus lineup, focus me lineup, but with a throw in the finals, the throw in the semifinals, potentially some hope to be salvaged and going into play-ins. Well, you might have a Chovy, HLE. Welcome to Aria's land. How could we have doubted them? The church comes up strong and they ascend in the finals here. And I just want to call it out. Who's the one who predicted the 3-0? Me. I am the king of the predictions as well. I'll take that victory on top of everything. Producer congratulates me and I'll let the desk congratulate me in DFM too. We'll be going to a quick break and when we come back, they'll break it down as well. Hello, hello, everybody. Yeah. 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 What did you think, Melvin? Sorry, I didn't have a knob prepared. Uh, oh, I thought you would have printed one out. Oh, no. No, no, no. Uh, you know, I was going to get a Zinza ready, but it was over before I could get the printer turned on. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Death Mars Swan Midnight. Melvin is all. Uh, I'm doing it the wrong way because it's, it's switched the other way this time now because of the camera. Joshi over on that side. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, congratulations over to our winners of the LJL 2021 summer season. Detonation Focus Me in decisive 6-0 fashion back-to-back -back games on a new patch. Are we even surprised, gentlemen? Are we really that surprised? Obviously, I'm going to come to you, Midnight, because clearly you must be, sir. I was not expecting the side of DFM to look just so unstoppable. Honestly, really? I was... Uh, yes, again, as I said coming into the day, 
I had the hope. That Rascal Jester used the time between their best of their five games against EFM um, and today to prepare champion picks that they obviously wouldn't be ready for. That's kind of what I was hoping for. That's what I would assume you do in the break between Sounds what logical. you were given vis-a-vis your win. But instead, it was the same old, same old for Rascal Jester when it came to Big Ben. Sure, there was a, a Jarvan and a, and a Viego thrown in there, but they didn't oh. turn the fights. No. No, it really didn't. I mean, what what else, guys? What else? RJ just couldn't get it, and DFM just look unstoppable. We just saw the same playbook again coming out from Detonation Focus. Now, we didn't see the same rise, teleport, bottom lane, or mm. to get the dive. We didn't see uh, the same kind of crazy play, top lane coming out from Evi. But you know what we did see? We saw Dragon Control consistently coming through. You go from mid down towards the Dragon. Rascal Jester weren't contesting. You saw a bunch of Realm Warps from Arya taking them directly towards the Baron or the Dragon and to move people around in ways that we weren't uh, really seeing match coming out from Rascal Jester. And... It honestly looked like DFM didn't really feel like they needed to mix it up. They were just given the rise every single time. And it was such a strong enabler for them across the map that DFM looking very strong going into Worlds. Melvin as well. Callum, sir, run me through the reason why a certain player might be on the tip of our lips on the player of the series graphic and kind of run us over the final team fight and the final defining moment, sir. In this final moment, in the final minutes of this game, it really just came down to DPSing from afar, which <laughs> isn't exactly out of the ordinary, but it's something that, as we're going to see in this clip, there's only one man that can do it like Utapon, and watching them throughout this series has been extravagant, and we're going to get to see just DFM continue to not only take an inch, but take a mile. We're going to throw ourselves, we're 24 minutes into the game, Dragons don't really have a massive impact at this point. The gold lead, you can see that DFM have their standard 3k gold lead that I think they've had at all of the clips I've shown you actually so did, far. Did for you today. not, Melvin, that's the buff that DFM get for being I, I DFM. I guess so, they just get to start with 3k extra gold. You know, it's a bit broken, but we do get to see Rascal Jester hiding under their turret, as you'd expect, on the minimap. DFM's already set up for a flank. This is shortly after Kanatu just got chased down in the river. I believe it was from Arya and Steel. And now this is just the fact that you can't really do much to this squad when you give them an inch. They always take the full mile. And you can see it's just waiting. Gang goes in, gets the massive engage. Sol, they're gone in a blink of an eye already. And at this point, what is your DPS? If you look for Rascal Jester, you don't have your Camille, you don't have your Varus. It is just this Zoe who has actually gone for the clarity just to have some semblance of mana using the spellbook because of how out of resources they are. Mm. If only for the fact this is underneath a turret for Rascal Jesters. Otherwise, this would be DFM clean sweeping the play. And you know, it's not too far from it. Because Gang still living on the side, only ticking down to the trundle ult at the end of it. But Ebby gets the beautiful Nart back under the tower. And as soon as that jungler is dead... I think we all know what time it is, and it is most definitely Realm Warp time, because you can see right here they're grouping up, getting ready to go, and every single time you lose a fight to DFM when they have this rise, they sprint it to the objective. We have the teleport coming back in from how long ago the pick onto Kanatu was, and now you can see that it's set up with the three versus four around the objective. Look at the cooldowns. We don't have Solar Flare. We don't have really anything special from Zoe Portal Jump. Yeah, that's not going to steal the Baron. And Kanatu, they have the ultimate, but it's not going to be enough, as you're going to see here. It's just DFM doing what they do best with low resources as well. You can see Ebi is getting blown up in the back of the pit. Currently got a stopwatch coming out right here to buy time in the middle. And then over the wall, we have the attempted 1v1. This is our man of the match we're going to need to be watching here with Utapon versus Kanatu, because... It's something about their Israel is just unbeatable. They have two people come over the wall to try and stop them. Meanwhile, in the pit, great lockup comes out onto recap, killed by two members of DFM. The Baron goes down after this, and the game at slivers of HP DFM somehow secure a four-person Baron. That's just what they did over and over again, Callum. They they kept doing this in multiple series, and it feels like in a weird way, you could have told me that was from game one. 
And I might have believed you. It felt repetitive at points. With this right? uh, rise in the Zinzao combo, it there wasn't much that we saw Rascal Jester's able to do. And it's one of those things that when you have a best of five series and the pick mm. and ban, you can always look at it and go, why this? Why that? We never but then, got... yeah, but then you have to look at it and try and approach it from different angles because you've practiced this. You know what works and what doesn't. So you don't necessarily get to just pull out an answer. You can't let them have LeBlanc because it'll be a similar story just with more kill and less objectives. And they were always just finding these opportunities around the map for detonation to focus me. And that is going to be our player of the series. Udapon was overwhelmingly voted the MVP of this. We haven't quite got a graphic, but that'll be on our Twitter very soon. I do promise you that one. So uh, <laughs> pending that one, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I do want to Ooh, announce it. Aria. Yeah, what... Ooh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Buff Adius, I think is what you were called. Um, the pick and ban phase decider. Uh, no, uh, Arya didn't get it. I'm sorry. He got he got oh. it yesterday. All right, give give. Got to share. Person. Yeah, right. You got to share with your teammates. We know it's all about Arya, but not 24 like, seven. Honestly, like Arya's macro play during the series was really impressive, but it was the kind of thing where it's hard to necessarily attribute that directly to Arya. We know that he's not necessarily been the primary shot caller for them, uh, right. and that's the kind of thing that other people can call for. Whereas everything we saw Utopon do, he had immaculate positioning in games one, two, and three. He was able to stay alive so much better than he really should have been able to. And yeah. just seeing his willingness to posture both really defensively and aggressively and switch it up super, super efficiently really gave me reason to vote for him for my player of the series. And I'll stand by it. I feel like he really mm. performed exceedingly well for a player that has as long of a career as he does. That is a huge ask, right, of a player that has been playing for over eight years, I believe, at this point, professionally at the highest level in Japan and as well internationally, because he rarely misses an international event from the LJL. And the fact is, he's still maybe the best he's ever been. And we're going to Worlds with this roster. Midnight. What's the hopes we should be setting for people right as we close the stream with DFM having that invitation? What should the hopes be for some of the people from your perspective? Well, as someone who may or may not be also from a minor region, I've maybe got a bit of a slanted perspective on this one. But crazy, all crazy. All, yeah, all, all, all you should feel very confident um, mm. with the likes of DFM. They looked nearly unstoppable locally, uh, bar, you know, the five matches against Rascal Jester. And clearly, they fix up the errors that they made in that series. It was a 3-0 today, and I don't really think you can look at this uh, series today and think, oh, but but if Rascal Jester changed this one thing, everything mm. would have changed. No, there wasn't one thing wrong for Rascal Jester today. Oh, DFM probably. had their number from start to finish. So you, you feel confident. You've got a damn strong mid laner. Your support is basically a, a, an AI bot that has somehow been learning this game for a long time because Danny looked impressive on the Alistair specifically. Mm. Um, but... For all of the strengths, there are a few things that I do worry about. Now, it's something that we've addressed multiple times, hell, in this one broadcast alone. Top lane champion pools. If Evi just gets, loses two or three of his champions, loses the Nar because, well, why would, look at this little thing, why would you want this? Um, loses the Renekton, which we know he can definitely play, and is sort of resort to say, hey, I don't have much of a choice here, I've got to play set. Then you can start getting played around very, very easily. Or let him have the Nar and then just camp the crap out of him. So it's got great opportunities. And I'm not, I don't want to say how they're going to do because I actually don't know all the teams fighting in the. Um, all I know is that there's uh, DFM and Peace. Um, <laughs> sure. And that may have been because that's it's my team's team tournament. <laughs> I mean, um, the only but, important one. But it's, there's good opportunity. Just Ebby, I think, is the weakest link. But then again, it's Ebby. He sh as long as he presses W, he'll be fine. With Ebby presses W, we'll be fine. Marvin Izzel, what should we be setting our expectations for detonation, folks? I mean, Midnight saying he's not fully sure willing. He's not willing to put a flag down, but he's like, be hopeful. What about you? I, I would easily say this is a group's quality team. It's just a matter of the draw that leads up to it, because... I can see this even doing damage in one of the more middling groups, you know, avoiding as good of an LPL team as humanly possible. But you, there's four of them. That's kind of hard to do. 
I feel like this team should get groups looking at the other three seeds from major region, four seeds for uh, Korea and China that are going in. I think that we're going to get some fun matchups one way or another. And I'm going to be crossing my fingers that we get to see Rogue because that, I think, is probably the best shot that DFM have. Some competitive matchups. Yeah, go for it, Joshi. Yeah, I, I just feel like this is the team that Japan is going to be offering and is likely to be our strongest international competition for quite a while at this mm -hmm. point. We saw, you know, they were able to take games off of some of North America's best. And honestly, I expect they could do similar things to Europe. We just haven't seen them play a European team in literal years at this point. Uh, but we know that they are one of the stronger wildcard teams at this point. They can mm -hmm. start looking. To make some upsets and if they can start taking some games off of major region teams as well uh this team could very easily get into groups and while i hesitate to say making it to the bracket stage afterwards it mm. still would be a huge uh improvement over everything that japan has done so far so big hopes for dfm i think we should be actually getting one of our best performances yet Big words from everybody on the desk high expectations to be set but we're tempering them saying hey for us, high expectations are getting to groups. That's the dream. <laughs> that's the goal. Can the LJL do something they've never done before? Well, we'll find out this world with Detonation Focus Me. Thank you, by the way, to everyone for watching us throughout this incredible 3-0 series. Thank you so much to Reed for producing this whole show and just being an MVP. Thank you to Ebrom uh, for producing our show yesterday and just being an incredible source of inspiration for the broadcast, as well as also over to Chris. Without Chris, we wouldn't ever look anywhere yeah. near. Thank you for the IIR that came in out of Thank nowhere. Thank you to you, Lexi. MVP, uh, thank MVP. you, Mass Swan. Thank you, chat. Thank Mass Swan. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Nymera and Initialized. By the way, that my co-founders of the LJLOU. Without them, none of this would be possible. As well as myself, obviously. Uh, thank you over to Midnight Melvinism and Joshi for joining me on this desk. Thank you over to Chimo and someone and like so many people that have been able to make this broadcast. Middle court, um. Uh, we had formal on, we've had counterfeit on and helping us with with Academy. Uh, Yulwei as well coming on from the VCS. Uh, we've had Kashka, um, uh, King, King Naka as well coming on. Dara came on, Mogulai Cast came on, Recollect. So many people have come on and helped and made the LJL OU what it has been today. It's been an incredible 3-0 series. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously our podcast will still be continuing as always. We've got so much more to talk about for LJL just because the season is over. Doesn't mean our chances at Worlds aren't, so uh, don't worry, we'll have some content for you there. I'm sure these gentlemen have a lot of things planned, so I am going to very quickly throw it over to Midnight, Melvin Izzle, and then Joshi to plug anything else that they would like to say and cast, because hey gentlemen, you're on finals, why not? Uh, I suppose the standard social media? I, 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 I actually plugged myself before, I'm horrible at this stuff. Um, and obviously when we do get to Worlds, um, as much as I feel like I'm going to have to stand for DFM, uh, let's just say if DFM and Peace run into each other into a dark alley, um, I'm an Australian at heart. That's, that's all I've got to say. Fair enough. I can understand. I can understand. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, for everything. You even introduced us to Formal. Like, without you, we wouldn't have had our host for yesterday. So true, huge inspiration there. Melvin is all, you're, you're asking for one more second, so I'm going to go to you. To oh. <laughs> all right, he's got to print something out real quick. Yeah, so... <laughs> Again, as always, thanks to everybody who has been watching. If you want to see more of what we do, you know, my link is right above here. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, we also, I've been very big in the North American amateur and academy scene. So if you're interested in any of that, you can catch me at Proving Grounds uh, multiple times over the next couple of weeks where you get to see everything that the North American amateur scene has done and get to see where some of the people like uh, Danny, uh, who's now playing for Evil Geniuses and Tactical, who's now going to Worlds with Team Liquid, where they all get their start and really show that North America, I promise you guys, we have talent. We just need to bring it to the forefront. All right, my second favorite region. There's still hope. All right, Copium. All right, guys, we can we can do this one. Let's go, TSM. Wait, no, that's the wrong chant to make for NA. Uh, Melvin is. <laughs> Couldn't find it. I was trying to find the uh, make sure to you know follow our lovely, lovely Twitch channel over here. Go on over to Twitter, subscribe on there. You know, give us all of that attention because you we've got put on a good show here. I think to say. I think you've enjoyed it because you're still here after all of this post-Ambulcina. 
make sure you tune in because we'll be back next split, obviously. But more importantly, keep your eye on Worlds. Also Twitter, I guess. Yeah, we'll be doing our Worlds co-stream. We're not, we're, all of these plans are far off in the future. Follow us on Twitter. Follow everybody on the thing. I've been Mars One. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>